Let's open our cafe. Uh, so tonight uh, we have uh, two wonderful, very versatile, incredibly talented uh, people among us. Uh, that is uh, Candida Borges and Gabriel Mario Vélez. Uh, they uh, will introduce us in their uh, most recent projects um, and um, integrating technology, nomadic practices, and transculturalism. Um, they, um, Candida is uh, associate professor at the Uni Rio in, in Brazil. As he's visiting scholar at Colombia, uh, fellow researchers at the Antioquia University in Colombia, and uh, recently, recently got her PhD at the Interdisciplinary Center for Computer Music Research at Plymouth University. A bit of research on transmedia composition and human migration, where it is all about uh, tonight. Uh, Candida is as well a very gifted musician and a transmedia artist, um, wonderful educator, a composer and researcher. Um, she coordinates the Brazilian non-profit Casa de Arte Cultura uh, already since 2000. Um, so mixes her artistic, creative and uh, uh, scholar uh, talents with being an entrepreneur of social cultural projects and a curator of many events and programs that promote exchange, art, education, and culture throughout Brazil and worldwide. Uh, she is joined by Gabriel, Gabriel Maria uh, Vélez, um, who's a visual and transmedia artist as well, deeply uh, involved in the project we will hear about in a minute. He's a professor, an arts administrator, and a scholar from Colombia. He's the dean of the Antioquia University School of Arts and has a postdoc from the National University of Cordoba and a doctor master of fine arts from the Complutense University in Madrid. Uh, that as an in only a very basic introduction because your uh, uh, biographies and CVs are a rich menu of delicious uh, um, activities. And uh, the last one is really an, uh, uh, a main dish that we will enjoy together. For once, our cafe will be a, a very rich uh, provided restaurant. Um, so I hope uh, that you all will enjoy the um, conversation with uh, Candida and uh, Gabriel. I'm looking forward to the discussion uh, afterwards. Cool. So thank you so much, Girit, for introducing us. I'm here starting to talk. Uh, we plan it here between me and my partner, Gabriel, so that I would start the conversation. And then we, I'm going to be having him join me in the middle. I'll be the one like sharing my screen with the presentation. I have a small presentation um, for us to discuss a little bit of the concepts and the ideas that is behind this work. So what we are discussing here today is the Transiuntes Mundi uh, work. Before I start the presentation, let me uh, kind of explain this a little bit. So this, is, this was created um, as a virtual reality um, work uh, based on a nomadic practice. And that carries the, the title of my PhD dissertation that I recently graduated like uh, two months ago. And I use this work as a study of case of applying a nomadic practice with technology and using um, emerging technologies applied to nomadic practices to create immersive and interactive works. So this work um, was, was launched in 2019. After then, we already released it six uh, works deriving from this project it became a project in itself and now also became a company. So it's an artistic project, it's, an, it's a cooperate, and it's also a body of works of um, nomadic pro projects uh, using this, what we call the Transiuntes Mundi methodology. You guys are going to see as a TM methodology, TM derive, TM works. And so I'm going to uh, explain a little bit of the context of how we created that. So as I said, this is a four years research around my PhD. Gabrielle was also one of the directors of my PhD, beside the co-author of this work uh, with me. 
he's also one of the minds that guided my my PhD. Uh, so I'm also very happy here to be sharing with you guys. I love the platform of Walk, Listen, Create. Um, this is very interesting. So we participated last year. That's how we got to meet this wonderful team. Uh, so we applied for a, an installation online and we also made part of a very uh, interesting conversation with other artists also based on nomadic practices. Um, and so we're very happy with the invitation. When I thank this once more to Abgir, to Andrew, to Babak, and also to congratulate you all for, for making part of this amazing uh, collective, right? I, I, I enjoyed a lot the website, all the other works that I saw. Um, I didn't, I couldn't imagine so many works uh, around the same, uh, the same topic and the same ideas. That's really wonderful. So I know that you guys are also artists uh, researching the same field. So feel free to uh, ask me and interrupt me and, and make questions. I, as I'm going to be sharing, probably I won't be able to read the chat, but feel free to open your mic and interact with us here. This is a cafe, right? So we all, nobody has a cafe in your hands for what I see, but um, let's pretend we all are having a, a coffee break right now for us is early. Uh, but I would be happy to, to be sharing this conversation in a more informal way with, with all of you. So let's go. I'm going to start now. Uh, you guys, you, I have two monitors here, so you guys are going to see me looking to the side sometimes. So let's see here. I just want to say, Andrea, sorry. Yes, please, sure. <laughs> say hello. And I imagine this is a, a good example of the reef because we are placed in different places in the world. I imagine you are in, in different cities, in different locations. And also you have drinking a coffee from Colombia or from Brazil or from whatever. So we are now a perfect example of movements. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's true. Cafe de Colombia is, is, is one of the is, is softest, it's a little soft than the others, maybe Brazilian or maybe from Africa. And we taste the, all of the, the different places, this kind of flavors. So we, the idea to show you uh, this project is to, to talk about the movements around the world. Uh, what happened with the, this kind of movements uh, show up in the arts and how you can use the technology for share this kind of experiences. Okay, let's start. Okay, great. Can you guys see our screen well? All good? Great. So um, that's the Transimundus Mundi project a nomadic creative practice about the millennial human global journey. And that's me and Gabrielle, the two researchers that make part of this project. So here we go here. So the Transimundus Mundi project proposes to capture the sound and visual memory of people's cultural expressions and places to artistically tell the story of the millennial passersby that have been crossing the world. It currently portrays the diversity of four countries from four continents in constant expansion. It generates an immersive poetical and documental archive of human cultural heritage, aiming to evoke awareness about ancestry, identity, and legacy. The expression transeuntes mundi comes from Latin, the lingua franca of the expansion of Western culture. It personifies the human being who has been taking the adventure either to survive, to explore, or discover the world. Its methodology employs walkscapes recordings with immersive 360 technology. From this archive, it starts a process of transmedia composition, creation of virtual reality works, videos, photographs, sound art, musical compositions, installations and performances with the aim to immerse the observer participant into an experience beyond their space and time. In short, it is a combination of knowledge, technology, and poetics supported by the process of artistic research and mediated by transmedia technology. So um, let's start talking about transeuntes and mobility. 
So the idea, the original idea of this project started with a DNA uh, ancestry report. This is my, the report of my, of my DNA. And that was taken in 2017, back, in, back there in, in 2017. Um, and that map, right? So that map started to, to uh, awaken in us this idea of, wow, look at this, how our ancestors migrated so much, how they have been walking the world. This idea of walking is not new. So we are made of the walks of our ancestors. Uh, what is made of and what is this? And I also noticed from some other friends that also did the same, the same map, the same report, that their map had color in just one country, two countries, like a smaller walk. And me and Gabrielle, we had similar maps uh, that reflected the way that South America was formed and how we have been migrating for centuries and centuries, not to say uh, millennials of years. So that was the trigger of this project. I started naming this like the DNA Archive Project, which still runs. And, and that's the idea that we are heritating walks. So the questions that were moving this uh, composition was, who am I before that? Who were us before that? Of who? what or, and where am I made of, and where have I been before? So the millennial pastors, by not entering more the investigation process, like the artistic research process, uh, that map reflects the, this phenomenon that we call the millennial human global journey that tells, according to researchers that we have in this point, that we started, we all started from Africa. Some studies shows more to the north, some are to the south, um, and so. But we all agree that we started somewhere around Africa, and we started walking till we populate the last uh, continent was then South America, and we have um, heritaging uh, thousands and thousands of years um, of the expansion of cultures, societies, biologies and knowledge through these walks. So these walks formed the, the diversity and the, the richness of our biology. So we started uh, developing this, this graphic of concepts. So this idea was developed around these three groups, transhumans, transculture, and transmediality was the body of concept that we created to explain this project, to develop this investigation. So Transhumanity is based on uh, Deleuze and Guattari and, and also articulates the concept of walkscape and the Reeve from Francesco Caretti and the International Situationist. Transculture articulates uh, the concepts of trans anthropophagy from Andrade, which is a Brazilian writer that influenced a lot of the um, artistic production in the last century, and a concept named Minimal Stories that I will explain a little bit later. And the idea of transmediality, more specific into artistic composition, in which I discuss 360 media, media and immersion and interactivity techniques. All this runs around the narrative of minimal stories and are also framed by the idea of ancestry. Okay, so starting by transhumans, transhumans is the philosophical concept that um, reflects the idea of migration. So in A Thousand Plateaus, uh, Deleuze and Guattari developed the, the concept of transhumans as a fluidic, a, a, as a walk in a more abstract meaning, not only reflecting geographies, but also reflecting about time, also reflecting about um, ideas, concepts, and I bring this to the field of arts. So when we are migrating across media, um, so that's the a kind of a more broad understanding of migration and walks. In trans culture, um, Andrade talks about the idea of heritaging and transforming, appropriating and transforming towards something new and unique, but as a, as a heritage of what came before. So it gives a, a con the context of culture to the idea of migration and transformation. So 
uh, when we look especially to, so this is an idea that was formed, a concept that was formed in Brazil and developed all over South America. Uh, so we are talking about these countries that were formed by the heritage of all the old worlds and all these cultures that got mixed into our continent and how we are expressing this as new ideas, new works, and you know, new proposals to the world. So these works were had as reference the two main projects here. The, the main one is named Transeuntes Medellin, was a project that Gabriel had since 2006, right, Gabriel? Six, 2006 or four, something yeah. like that. That so we, I'm going to, to have one moment here for you to talk about that also, but any, any moment you want to join, of course. So we started, um, so we started by using the methodology and the concept of minimal stories from this project that Gabriel had created before. Um, and he, he is the first one to, to, to uh, create the concept of minimal stories as a form of narrative. So, um, do you want to talk a little bit about Transeuntes Medellin? Yeah. The ancestor yeah. of Transeuntes Mundi. And you know, uh, for us, it was a, a very challenge to, to how to present the idea of the world uh, passerby. How we can say something about now in, in our times. We can say, yes, the, the, the human is a passerby from the, a journey that starts so, so a lot of centuries in the past. But you know, we, the culture is, is the recipient when we can uh, mix all these kind of uh, tragic, the kind of uh, movements uh, from the people. And when we wrote the, the, the manifesto anthropo, uh, anthropophagico, anthropophagic, anthropophagic manifesto, uh, Andrade give us some of the clues of this, of the, this is, uh, strategy, the idea of how we can uh, present the different uh, movements of the people is just showing the people today because uh, the culture, how the people lives, how the people work, the, the, how the people walk, how the people just see the world is, is, is the way to, to present this journey, this known journey. And that's why we use the concept of minimal stories because they, in the short story that the people tell about his life, how the, the, the life is living, is the way that we understand uh, the strategy for reveal the idea of this kind of movements. And that's, that's the meaning of minimal stories. Uh, the project can say, well, this Medellin, but the translation could be, uh, passerby in Medellin or, uh, is, uh, is based in a, a big one archive that, that we, we have right now, around a million and a half uh, pictures that was taken in the city uh, in the 50s, uh, uh, around the 50s and 80s, the, the last century. And um, we captured this uh, archive and we try to find the people, and the people tell us the stories uh, that are content in the in the pictures, and discover these minimal stories. Uh, present as the yes, the, the idea of how the people live in this reality, and does reveal at the same time the long journey from the human being. That's the idea. Yeah. So continuing from that. Uh, so now I'm going to present the list of works that created the reference for creating this um, the structure of the, of the plan of this composition um, and the, the ones that were answering the, the question of this research. Uh, I'm not fully sure that I got the, the comment that is here in the, in the chat. We can talk about that later. I'm not, this for nothing is pretending to think that it, this is the first time a project like this is created. But for sure, this is, there is a question around this of how emerging technologies can answer to the, 
to the idea of ancestry and the walks and all that. And that's the, I believe that's the contribution of this work. I not only believe as I also developed a whole thesis on that, tested in, in some festivals and academic uh, conversations and things like that. Okay, so another work that also had the idea of minimal stories was a, a movie by um, Carlos Sorin, that is an uh, Argentinian uh, director that also uses this, the idea of a minimal story, although he didn't conceptualize about that, that was also um, a narrative that, that this, that's also where an expression, this expression was used. And then, and this is like, I was framing this, um, we were framing the, the two concepts here, the, the, the two uh, projects here as the narrative that we would use to guide the, the walks and the search we were doing. Um, some other works here to reference the the idea that of the audiovisual investigation was the city symphony, cine poetics, right? The ideas that came from cinema, experimental films, um, and also more contemporary works like VR documentaries created now already, like in 2015. Uh, some other references here was of course the work of Boyce, one movie that he did, um, he, he does a performance, right? So staring at the camera and also works by Andy Warhol. So more into the experimentation with image, performance, and the idea of the look, right? So the gaze as also a, um, a frame for the lens action and how to document the walks that we were doing. Um, from the perspective of sound, um, I was using a kind of composition uh, that was a field of composition named acoustic ecology. Um, and for that, these are like the references that created this work, which is Listen by Max Nelhall, Neuhaus, and Murai Schaefer, that was the one that theorized around the idea of soundscapes. Uh, so these are some of the works that formed the references to, for us to create Transeuntes Mundi. Uh, the idea of uh, Jorge Luis Borges, his book on Atlas, <clears throat> with the idea of nomadism and stories around the trajectories of nomadism. Then Abi Warburg with the idea of legacy, right? How um, also the nonlinear work, uh, all the ideas of fragments of stories and and, the, and offering the audience the possibility to create a line of understanding of uh, different uh, elements of the work. Uh, then the experimentalism with image that Andy Warhol uh, offers with his um, um, films. And also the age of immersion and interactivity proposed by Laurie Anderson and Huang in her more recent works with VR. So here are the concept of ideas around the, uh, the sorry, uh, a complex of ideas around the, the concept of nomadism and the main words that we develop in this work, which is the idea of immersion, art, poetics, ancestry, legacy, art. So colliding all these uh, projects and concepts and ideas in order to form this methodology that uh, we developed in the last four years. Um, so then it comes here a little bit more into the methodology. So we reference first the work of Careri with the age of walkscapes. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, combining this with the studies of Schaefer around the compositions on soundscapes, also the works on Pauline Oliveros and the techniques around deep listening. And, and of course, the international situationist and the experiences around the reef also. That's, um, so then that's the complex of fields that we develop in the work. We, 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 we create, that's why also the idea of a transmedial composition because it comb combines fields around VR, performance, web art, photography, installation, cinema, sound arts, and crossed fields with all this. So, then comes the, the composition itself. So the question was how to create a, tra a transmedial experience across all these fields. So the idea was to use nomadism, walking practices as a methodology to create a transmedial work. So there was an explicit uh, question about 
how technology, how the combination and the walks across media could generate an artistic work. And that's how we get to the work to Transeuntes Mundi. So I'll show here a little bit of our trailer uh, that has the ideas of the work. Can you hear it? Okay, great. Uh oh. Did something wrong. Sorry, going again. This is a small, a small video clip that talks about the, um, yeah, shows a little bit of the narrative of the work. Moving forward. Um, okay, so here, minimal stories, and then we can see like four fragments. So the whole search here is for the idea of minimal stories here. So we're walking, observing walkers, uh, what I will define later as the three levels of walkscapes, um, looking for stories. That's, that's the, the whole game here of what we have been doing. And then we formed the Reef 01 in the beginning of the pandemic. Of course, we were affected by that. We had, we had a deadline because this was a, a PhD course also. So we formed the Reef 01 um, and we presented this with the four countries that we had by that time. Now we are recording the Reef 02, and we are also developing other works also. It, um, so the Reef 01 has eight cities and almost 56 minutes of audiovisual work. And these are the four countries that we have now forming the Reef 01. So the map that we use, this is the menu that opens the work, and this map of course, here, starting by Africa, it's what we call, they call like non-political map. And it reflects this map, the map of the millennial global human journey, uh, which is not familiar for a lot of people. Most, most of the people that, that watch the, the exhibitions, um, they are like confused by, oh, why the, the map is like this? What are these lines? So this is a kind of, this all, the work also has the, 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 the purpose of informing people about that. So there is also an educational aspect behind the work, which is also interesting always to see people discovering new things uh, while experiencing this work. So, um, when we select each of these countries, it opens like the cities, like a, a second level of menu that the person can choose where to go. In England, we have Plymouth and we have London. In the United States, we have like five different countries, five different cities. In Brazil, we have Sao Paulo, Rio, Niterói, 
Um, in Colombia, we have Medellin, Bogota, Coconuco, Popayan. Right now, we open for this event, for the people of this event to watch the web, the Reef01. So you guys can watch uh, the exhibition online if you want to, to experience the work a little bit. No. So then I transcribe a fragment of my thesis in, in, in where I say, in this practice, we performed walkscapes and what I define it as a three-level perspective. Uh, the global walkscapes that was across countries and cities, local walkscapes that is across places inside a city, so that's where when we arrive to the city, um, how we did the derive to record inside the city, and then the virtual walkscapes that happens at every new performance of the work by an audience, the work Transeuntes Mundo Derive. Uh, zero one. So every time you guys uh, go or if you open the exhibition right now, you are going to perform a walkscape, a virtual walkscape through these places, um, which has this kind of worldwide uh, perspective and uh, aim exactly to create, like Ab Warburg, the idea of um, uh, creating a different line of of appreciation of experience depending on what you decide to watch first, then what next, then that starts creating a kind of your own form, own own stru structure of the work, the sequence of language that you're going to be listening to, the sequence of uh, cultures, habits, costumes, architectures, landscapes, sound that you will be design, designing every time you watch the work. Uh, then I will talk a little bit more into the, the phase of composition itself. What am I? What was like structures uh, created around strategies of composition? Um, so the pre-production is, as I mentioned to you guys, we were based by on walkscapes, the idea of uh, soundscape and acoustic ecology, uh, the derives from international situationists, and deep listening from Pauline Oliveros which are all works that involved um, mobility, migration, walks. These were all interaction of the artist with the landscape. Uh, here are some, some images of us recording. Um, then we developed a social network around the project, which is like documenting the trips and creating interaction with local artists and um, the documentation of the journeys itself. So this was like the pre-production of the work. Uh, we were traveling with these two equipments, the Zoom H3, which is an ambisonic recorder, um, and also the Ricoh Theta 5. Uh, we also became endorsed by the Zoom company that now is one of the supporters of this work also. Um, and then we created a whole idea of archive this is like the way that we were archiving uh, all the recordings and also uh, mapping what to, how to um, label that, document that, how to store all that. Then it starts like the phase of um, editing, uh, editing, when I say editing, it's like cleaning, interacting with the idea of microphones. There are also, also distortions of image, distortion, distortion of sound, so working with the idea of keeping the material as realistic as possible. Um, that was like the proposal. Now thinking a little bit of next walks, we're already developing other technologies of presenting this archive, like for example, the hubs technology, the online technology that you guys can watch today. Uh, the hubs was not released yet. Then here comes a little bit of publications about the work, how it has been uh, performed in different places. Then we developed the um, workshops and residencies around the three topics that I mentioned before, like walkscapes, DNA archive, and the technology around what we did in terms of ambisonics and uh, 3D image. We continue to expand the map and create more opportunities for uh, adding new works. Um, so that, that's when also this work became a company in which we develop projects like this for other 
brands and um, grants and cities and things like that. Uh, this is a little bit of the theoretical derive that we have been um, developing some articles that we have published around the, the work. Um, yeah, so this is also in our website if you guys want to read about it and discover a little bit what we publish. So in the last four years here, we have five articles. We have one more, six articles. Um, this year, we are restarting the in-person um, exhibitions. You guys know that virtual reality was not something possible to be done in the last two years. So we are happy right now to restart in-person um, exhibitions. Um, a little bit of our team. These are the partners that we have, all the, the universities that we have behind us and also the companies that have been supporting us. Uh, some of the references of what we talked here. And this is like, this was like the, the body of the presentation that of what we did. Um, I would like to add two things here that are interesting. Uh, last week we were nominated for the Lumen Prize. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. There is, the Lumen Prize is a prize of art and technology, an important one from the UK. And we are very honored and, and thankful for being nominated for that. So the Reef Zero One now is, is in the, this list. In, in, the, in October, we will receive the, the, the prize in the UK. And yep, and that's a thesis for publication now. And that's a, the starting point of this journey, right? That, that involves like academic research, plus artistic um, presentations and compositions, and also um, a commercial approach also, as we are wanting to offer this as a methodology also for brands, for other companies that can uh, hire us in the technology we developed to create projects for their uh, brands also. Gabriel, you want to add something? No, I think we can talk about some ideas if you want to discuss, uh, for example, the name. For, for us, it was very interesting to choose the name, Transcendence Mundi, because the idea of the use of a, a dead language was one of the first discussion and how to use the uh, technology for translate this uh, perception, this experience was also very important. Uh, uh, I think I, I have to say that the experience in using the VR is, is very powerful and, and when we chose in the, the, the project in different places, really happened many, many things, very, very interesting uh, experiences uh, happened the people who participate in our projects because the experience is, is, is it's like you live in the, the, the other places and i think it's it's very interesting to to to, to talk a little about that how to to experiment the the, the work okay you can maybe to hear some questions or comment or comments if you want here, what is the dynamic here? Should we continue? To, because I have all material if we want, I can dive in more into, into process here, or if we open for questions here, what do you feel it's a, a good fit? Yeah. I think it's a good moment maybe to um, reflect about what you have said. It was a, it is a rich banquet uh, of ideas and, uh, and visions uh, at the same time. So what I, sort of uh, uh, appreciate a lot in what you do is that this multi-layered uh, approach you have towards uh, walking, which is at the same time something related to time, uh, walking in a deep time uh, uh, and in space um, as, as we are now. And at the same time, in, in what you add so beautifully is this, this virtual, um, the, um, the virtual way of walking that, that that comes together with these two other ways of, of uh, moving into space and uh, walking together with people from other times. And uh, so next to the idea of transhumans, I never thought about transhumans out of, an, out of this context. I always saw it like in a more um, shepherd-like uh, um, 
the context where animals right. move from one higher place to a lower and go back and humans follow uh, follow the traces of the uh, of the animals in in the, in an, in the landscape in the nature that they share together uh, so uh, it's very beautiful to see that this kind of movement is like say elevated to another uh, way of uh, human movement in accordance with nature uh, and our ancestors. So um, I, I don't want to talk too much. And then let, let's let's listen to some feedback, some comments, and I would love to hear then after uh, something more of what you have uh, done. Um, so if anybody has a comment, feedback, you can ask it directly or put it in the uh, in the chat if you prefer to write it down, and we'll go into it. Mm -hmm. Something you, you write something in the chat. Uh, the idea to to hear some of the stories, <laughs> yes, are beautiful. You know, uh, in the project of transformative medicine, we capture the audio and we capture the image, and the idea is to participate in some kind of yeah conversation, mediated but virtual reality. But uh, it happens. You are. Uh, virtual reality city, sitting in, in a place in the city of Medellin, and you can hear the story from the voice of the people. And it's, it's really beautiful. I don't know if you have a, a record of voices right now, but maybe we, you can go to the website and hear some of the stories. And maybe if, if you can share the experience in a, in a real place, we can show you and you can experiment the experience in a, in a some kind of exhibition if it could be possible maybe. In, where are you now? In Edinburgh in Scotland. Ah, <laughs> okay. So yeah. let me also add a little bit about this story. So something that, that's why we opened the exhibition for the audience here of the cafe, um, exactly because uh, we, we, there is not one story for you to watch and listen. So we don't have one story to offer you. We have a 360 environmental stories for you to pick the one that you like. So that's the opposite. You will tell us the story that you found interesting. You will tell what you, you will tell us what you saw in the in the work. We have been watching this work, of course, for years already. And every time we watch it, it's a different thing. It's just like when you. Uh, watching the, I'm coming back to Warburg here, I'm a lot with his, with his work in my mind right now. So when you go watch the work, it uh, probably if you start from Brazil and then go to back to Plymouth and all that, you will observe something different. And also remember that these stories are local, so the language is different. So you, if you're not familiar with that language, you will observe something different. Of course, you will have other elements to understand what is happening there. That's why also the age of the walkscapes is also so rich for us. There is not soundscape or something that is limited to one media only. Walkscapes gave us the, the possibility to, exp to explore transmediality in the walks. So we are interested in so many things happening in that place. And we offer you the whole package then you narrate your story, right? So depending on the angle, just like I did here with, with the, the clip, the video clip that I could um, move the image. And then when I move the image, the ambisonic sound is a feature that allows you to hear more what is in front of you. Just like when you were paying attention to something, I'm looking there, so I'm watching, I'm, I'm listening more what is happening here. And that's a, an effect that this kind of geographical sound produces to the work. Um, so you will be able to listen to different stories depending on how you position your mouse or if you're wearing the VR headset, on, depending on where you're looking at. That creates multiple films, multiple stories. So we don't have one story um, to tell you. You will tell us. What Gabriel is mentioning is that right now, this month, we are releasing a new work, which is the Transeuntes Medellin. Medellin is a city here in Colombia where Gabriel has this immense archive of photography from the 70s. 
And then for, for this one, we made a different uh, methodology because we were commissioned to create a work named um, the sonority of the passersby. So what we did was that we made a whole campaign online to identify these pictures of the 70s. So we made like Instagram, Facebook. So these people, um, some of them identified people from, from, the, from the archive and we are talking about black and white pictures of the 70s. Um, <clears throat> so then we, we invited these people and we interviewed them in 360 technology for them to tell the stories. So the, the VR work of Transeuntes Medellin is different because then there is a story to be told in the same place that it was told in the 70s. Um, and then that's another layer. So as we said, this is a project that is growing, right? So we are changing works. We are creating new works on, on inside this methodology. So um, Transeuntes Medellin, yes, has four stories to be heard. Transeuntes Mundi is the opposite. You tell me the story that you found out. Thank you. Yes, it was the Medellin one that I that I was picking up on because it, it, <clears throat> it sounded fascinating, the idea of interviewing people who were in those photographs those years ago. Um, but I, I thank you very much. I understand now. Thank we, you. Are, we, we are aiming to release that also in an in a online form soon to the end of the year. So we invite you also to follow that. If you want to take a look, probably we will release that by the end of the year. So it's Transeuntes Medellin. I'm going to type here, if you guys want to uh, follow us, transeuntesmedellin.com. Um, oh, sorry, there's somebody here. Everyone. And um, there is another layer that, that experience that is beautiful for me. It was one of the most beautiful experience in, that, in the project Transeuntes Mundi. And is when the, when the work is placed in, in exhibition, many things happen, and the people has an experience very strong. And the stories that happen there are, are really amazing. For example, one of the stories that always we, we talk about is some girl, uh, little girl, was uh, making a, a line for participating in the project. The line was very long, and we pass one another to, to see the work. And I remember she was uh, staying in the line. She was waiting in the line for the next um, turn for speed the work, for see the work. And she talks to, to, to another girl while we, she was uh, wearing the headset and asked, hey, where, where are you now? And the girl says, I am in Brazil. Ah, let's wait. And she put the headset in the, in the head and says, Bye, I'm, I'm in Brazil, but I can't see you here. And it was very amazing because it wasn't a, a very deep experience, in a very real experience. How, yeah, it was. And first, the, the, the experience was mediated, it was a representation, but for the people, was very, very real. And that's, that's really crazy. Uh, can I jump in here? And uh, I mean, something that I was kind of interested in, uh, I, I interviewed um, uh, some people uh, from Australia who were working on, uh, on, on theatre performance uh, in the street. And, uh, and they worked uh, first with, um, uh, in Melbourne, and uh, and then they they won the opportunity of uh, create, recreating the work in Adelaide, and and what they found was um, they 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 took they took much of the work that they developed in in Melbourne and were running it in Adelaide and and found that people weren't participating in the theatre performance. I mean, it was one of these things where the audience become part of the participatory process. Uh, part of the performance themselves. The audience become part of the performance without realizing it almost because, you know, it's about passers by and ob observation of, of different people. But what they then discovered was that if they changed the soundtracks that they were using 
and re-recorded soundscapes from Adelaide, plus inviting local musicians to provide their sounds, um, that they they then found that people were much more keen to interact. And, and, and that was kind of interesting to them because then they suddenly realized that not only did each city have its own original soundscape, the, the actual city has a different soundscape, which you can hear when you listen to New York compared to Plymouth or, uh, you know, or London compared to Columbia, depending on whether you've recorded it in Hyde Park or whether you've recorded it, you know, in a busier area. But what they were also discovered was that musicians playing the same notes, you know, yet playing it in a different they they played it in a style which Ad, was Adelaide style not Melbourne style and and that made people people were familiar with how musicians in their local area would play work and I just wondered whether you'd found that people who make stories up from different media and different places whether whether those whether the artistic output is actually you, you you know um changed if they're more familiar with the place in which they're making that work does that make sense or am i sort of you know talking <laughs> around the subject a bit um, i think there are many layers on, on that on what you say uh, so i'm talking about experiences of what we have been seeing in our exhibitions right most people look for places that they are not familiar with. They want to know areas that they are new for them, like as a, almost like a tourist thing, right? So I want to visit something new. Uh, but there, we, we did hear some interesting feedback from people from the city where we have, like, for example, uh, somebody from a city, from Medellin, watching Medellin and saying, oh, I had never noticed that the train has this sound or this or that. So. Um, you the the soundtrack of the of the of the soundscape right is really something that defines the city and a lot of people by this by creating this distance rather than watching watching your city inside the media um, it, it does make a different in, an interesting result some people not interested on that and some people like very interested I want to hear my own city and then discovering sounds that were not uh, part of their attention before. The other element that I want to talk talk about is that Andrew, in some in some of the areas we had music being played, so local musicians playing, and you were right saying that that was something that we did almost like on purpose, but not. Of course, we wanted to have more cultural expression in certain places. So these uh, five, for example, there is uh, in in New York there is one scene in Central Park that there is um, a chamber group playing tum -pum, pa -da -dum, pa -pa 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 -pa, and people love that scene. So the presence of music is something that also increases the, the interest for that area. But nobody knows that is, it is there, right? They only know when, they are, when you're already there because there is no script on the piece. So when you open, you see a geography, you see the map. So when you visit, every scene is a surprise. So you were walking through places just like when we walk in the city that you don't know what you're going to find. So what, I, what we see is that people stay longer in places where uh, we have, for example, a musical element happening. And as uh, they can change at any time, it's really like a kind of a crazy migration that you can stop your migration at any moment, change or come back to where you, have, you, you, you were before or move to another one. We notice that uh, these places are more popular. People tend to enjoy more of that. Uh, to have different perceptions. Although, as a, as a work in the contemporary art field, um, we, our aim is really to, to, you know, to provocate, right? It's, it's not really like to entertain people. There's no intention here to entertain. It's more to, to provocate, to create a, a kind of a reflection, an interesting, um, you know, love or hate it. We have a, a lot of haters also, of course. Uh, and that's also part of the work. An artist that doesn't have a hater is not provocating any anything. So it's good to have haters. Uh, so and so our game was also um, this idea of provocating reflections, especially when we show to people that they are formed of what all of us are formed, you know, in the past. So we are all sharing a, a past in common and things like that. And looking to our culture as a multi-layered 
expression of history and how technology is, you know, is bringing you into that space and time. And also one important thing is that the Rio Zero One was recorded before the pandemic. So for two years, we were, we, we were presenting to humanity um, uh, kind of, a, you know, that star that had already disappeared. We were all without masks. We were gathering in the streets and we were walking during, for example, festival, uh, the festivals that were in the middle of 2020 that everybody was home. And we received a lot of people saying that was so interesting and so nice to see people moving, to remember ourselves, how it was to be interacting with humanity, to be, you know, to be in, in occupying the world without any restriction of, of any order, right? And, and now that we are recording the Reef Zero 2 and we all have, still have masks and all that, it is a totally different moment. So the Reef Zero 1 has also this historical mark of a pre-pandemic time also. So many ideas here that I'm crossing with your question here. Uh, Bob, I know that you have a question. Please, can, yes, you... Please. Yes. Yeah. can you hear me? Yes, yes. You can. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think our practices overlap in as much as we use uh, walking art as a medium to extend our particular interests. If I've got it correctly, yours is transmedial work, uh, mine is performance art. But to me, transmedial isn't quite as vulnerable as performance art. With performance art, I become totally vulnerable, whereas transmedial is kind of a bit of a, an abstraction. I'm just wondering, uh, do you do that as a safety uh, device or it, it's because you're not particularly interested in a more uh, personal uh, situation? I, I, my way in, as I said in my questions here, is through my own experience of psychosis and uh, having in this walking experience, someone empathized with my psychosis in the walking act. So that would be coming in at a level of consciousness rather than at a level of transmedial work. Are you interested in extending it beyond the, the transmedial? That's sort of my question. Do you want to answer, Gabriel, or me? Um, yes, we, we are really interested in in the experience, in the real experience too. Um, we have different levels of that. For example, one of that is the, the, when, we, when we place the work in different places, for example, in a, in a street uh, around the world, and the people participate in the experience mediated for the actual reality. We, 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 we mix the different experience. But uh, it's, it's some kind of walking too. And we have two, another uh, kind of place, another kind of uh, project, and we are working right now. And it's the project uh, Echizo. And it's a, a place that we have in a city close to Medellin. And the idea for us is to, to walk around and have another kind of uh, relationship with the, with the artwork. And um, yes, I think it, right now in the world right now, we have different levels of possibilities to, to use medias and also use the real experience, the, the, the real body uh, walking. And yes, we have different options for that. I don't know if can you want to say something else. Oh, yes, I think I can complement that also. I would say that it's interesting because we call it a performative installation. Uh, we don't, because I would say in the performance part of the work happens in many different moments also. Uh, when we were recording in the streets, although um, we are not present in the camera, and that's why I invited people to watch the work before the cafe to have the, the experience of the work, right? When we are defining the work here, it, of course, it's very uh, small to translate the experience of the work itself. So I do believe that this work is performative, although I'm not in front of the camera in doing any kind of gesture or um, uh, inviting people for anything explicitly. So when we talk that the work of, of um, Andy Warhol, for example, is a performance on to, in front of the camera, 
uh, that's what we are doing also. So bringing elements of everyday life, um, which is a form of composition also that so many, so many have, have explored that before us. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of expanding the understanding of performance when we are recording in the streets, when we are walking in the streets and deciding here we will record and we put the camera and that camera is visible. That's not a hidden camera. That's why it also didn't fall against any kind of ethic control uh, in the academic field. Because the, the camera is, uh, is very visible. It's like it's in the middle of, of the streets. And then people, the, the passersby are performers for sure. You guys can see that they interact with the camera. Then comes the idea of the voyeur, the idea of staring at the camera, some ideas that we develop in, art, in other articles that passersby become uh, performers. Then the performance aspect, I believe, that is transmitted to the audience watching the VR um, and interacting with the material in a nonlinear form, in a non-predictable form, in, an, in a length that is decided by the audience. And, um, and that's, that's why also we put this installation in the, in the performative side, because it is not cinema, it's not music, it's not uh, any kind of media that is inside itself and can be defined inside one media. So I believe that the expansion that the concept of performance allows us, that's why we use perform performative installation. Uh, also because the VR is not the only work, we also have the projections outside. There is a performance with stones that people bring a, a piece of stone from the place where they come from. So the, the installation in a museum, for example, has other elements that, that interact with the audience in a more physical way. And then let me ask also, uh, let me answer about safety. Uh, mediation is a safe way of composing. That's an interesting question. I'm going to think about it because if we are considering that every performance is live, which I would disagree, performance not necessarily is live, um, and every media is a safe place for a creator, I don't know, I will think about it. Um, I, would, I would tend to say no, because every time I mediate and I record something, I'm so sure of or unsure of what I'm doing that I don't think that would be a safe place. If I, am, um, if I want to be safe, I wouldn't record and make that last forever. Right, so to make something last forever is the most unsafe thing, uh, thing that we can do. Right, every time we record something, we have a proof that we did something, that we said something, that you created something. So I think that mediation is the most unsafe thing that we can do. Some thoughts here. Could I just say a quick thing? Sure. Okay, my my vision's gone. No, I, I'm not trying to be over dramatic, but just take the example of Chris Burden, who had himself shot in the arm. I'm not suggesting you shoot people in the street, but that would be the direct um, implication of what I'm saying. In fact, I took what Chris Burden did further into even more scary places with myself. I didn't. Anyhow, that's apart from the point. I'm just. Um, it, it just seems that you're. Uh, I think when you bring in this, the dimension of virtual reality, that might be a way of compensating. So I'm, I'm very interested in what you're doing. Well, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, Candida, as, as Andrew as well uh, writes in the chat, um, the, the question is, I think, how, in what extent is technology an extension of our bodies and of our senses? Uh, what is uh, something that, that, that is that the true potential of, of, of locative media? Uh, since the early 2000s that, that actually um, is something that is linked with the body movement and with the body body as, a, as an instrument to know and to, to sense what is around us, to come to, an, a, to an, a deeper awareness, a deeper consciousness about what is around you, uh, not only mentally, but, but uh, uh, with knowing and feeling with the whole body. And uh, so and, uh, what do you do with like things like smell or touch, which are essential for um, physical walking when you introduce the, let's say, the, the concept and then the, the practice of virtually walking, in which sense is this a full, in full extent uh, walking or a shadow of it? No? Um, it's interesting, get it last week, two weeks ago, we were in a residency here with the MIT, an MIT lab of 
of uh, one of the main, um, if not the main group of researching and exploring about metaverse, right? So we have nowadays a whole industry around NFT art, metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality, all these parallel realities that are um, based on a reality that is not this one that we have. And one of the discussions that we have is, is it a reality, right? So the metaverse, so something that you're living that is not in this dimension, this plane of, of dimension, but you have an avatar, so you interact with people, you go to places. Now we have been invited to make concerts in the metaverse. So the, the theater is in the metaverse, right? So there, in their definition, in the MIT definition, that is non-fictional work. And I asked it about that. So how's, how can that be non-fictional if we don't have all the sensorial part of the experience? And that it, this is like a huge discussion for us to interact with. Like um, that is, of course, uh, virtual reality is a way, a, a deep way of immersion, immersion by visual and audible senses, but we are lacking on other senses. That's no doubt on that. In our ex installations, we have a physical component, as I said about the stone. We do a mandala of stones. People can come and interact with that. But during the experience of the VR, this is still a limitation, right? This is still something that um, is, is not there present. That's why also we are also expanding the work to have walks in these areas where we recorded. So we will be promoting also walks exactly in, in the cities in the US where we, where, where we recorded, in Colombia and all that. So physical walks, but also um, interacting with this kind of imaginary. I'll give you an, an, an interesting uh, example. Somebody in one of the exhibitions, the virtual reality is so you know, immersive that she said, oh, uh, I'm in Bogota, I'm already feeling cold. Just by watching the place that was rainy there, so, of course, she was not feeling cold, but she had the sensation she was feeling cold. Or another example that was a woman that, that, that also in the, in the scene that there were some birds and the woman like uh, moved and she said, oh, one bird like touched my leg. So our capacity to imagine these senses also is there in the virtual reality. I, mean, I cannot attest this and say, oh, virtual reality will simulate all these senses. But we see the exhibitions, people describing things like I smelled, I, I felt the temperature, I felt the touch. Of course, that's an illusion. That's yeah, an illusion. Um, I remember uh -huh. we, we experimented some devices in New York, for example. Yeah. We use another kind of device, very, very sophisticated devices for reproduce the touch of the movement right. on, on the sound. Um, yeah, you can tell something about that too. Which devices? Which one? The, the device that the people Oh, yes. Were. There was one work that we call vibrational <laughs> walkscape. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, vibrational walkscape. So uh, a company named Music Not Impossible developed, they developed haptic devices that you wear and you also have wrist and you have for the foot. And they developed this as an accessible uh, device, especially for um, hearing, hearing loss, diseases and disabilities. So we did a concert uh, with one th 135 people with hearing disabilities and they were wearing all that and they also experimented, experimented our work um, without hearing the, the landscape, right? So they were watching that and they were feeling that in, the, in, in their bodies, which of course is a, it's, a, it's a trial to make the thing more immersive. So we wrote a, a, an article saying about this, the vibrational walkscapes, which is like diving more into sensorial elements by vibration, transforming sound into movement. Smell is still a question. In this, in this concert, there was a person transforming smells into vibration also. Um, but definitely this is a question of, you know, it's just like watching a movie. Uh, definitely VR is more immersive than going to the cinema, definitely. Um, uh, VR is more, um, is less than any kind of physical interaction and, and, and physical, um, in, uh, yeah, performance and, and live performance with anything, right? But that's a tendency, I'll, I'll tell you guys, the metaverse, it also, it causes me also questions, like especially to say that the metaverse is a reality, is realism. 
metaverse is non-fictional creation. For me, it was a shock also to understand that. I thought that, you know, we can mediate reality, but the, to say that the metaverse is a reality, for me, is also but, hard to digest. But you know, can the, the experience of art from the beginning, the, 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 the first trace in a, in a, in a place, come, uh, call the imagination for uh, some kind of representation that, that when some when something is a representation you are you can have the experience the real experience but at the same time you build you participate building the stories uh, for example uh, yeah, from the beginning of the theater for example i think i i, I lose the connection no, you're here. We can hear you. Ah, okay. Hear you. Yeah, I think the, the, the base of the art is that. It's, it's, the, the art doesn't exist. It's uh, some kind of media that uh, needs the, the participation of other for uh, make the experience. And yeah, for example, the, 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 one of the, the most real, the, the most real phenomena in the world, the when the people walk uh, around the city in, in some cities in Italy, for example, the people get uh, get uh, ill because of the beauty. That's 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 really one of the phenomena most interesting and crazy at the same time. So, kind of this uh, show the the, the art the experience of art. It's really a, a, a very deeply one. It's, it's a phenomenally interesting uh, discussion uh, to bring this to almost to a metaphysical level, uh, although I'm, I'm still speaking the 19th century language and I think we will come to a 21st uh, century language where reality will become something completely different as we have understood uh, before um, not as a world of ideas uh, but as an a world of uh, um, that is beyond touch and that is beyond uh, beyond the senses as an as an extension that um, lies on top of it as so a layer on top of it and and, and includes it um, uh, how abstract this may sound now, maybe it will be um, something much more tangible um, uh, along uh, other ways of thinking uh, that are developing. I think uh, Bob is seeing us again. <laughs> Hello. No, no. Yeah, I think you again. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, I see there were some more remarks, uh, some feedback in the in the chat. I don't know if you want to react on that. If you can have a look to the chat, or if Vicky or Andrew want to speak up, uh, please feel to do so. feel free to do so. Oh, I, I just feel you're playing it a bit safe. That's all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mm. Now, it is true that in, let's say, in the, the 60s, 70s performance uh, art, uh, that um, at one side, vulnerability, that, that I'm not talking about the more uh, 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 obvious uh, performances where the body really was put to limits uh, and then was going beyond limits, uh, as with many performers did, uh, the, to. Uh, that uh, I think we are talking about other limits today and that um, we cannot uh, see the world anymore in the light of just the body as we knew in the 20th century. Um, and for um, uh, and that, that, that the work that happened in, in, in the 1960s, 70s, as well, including already digital media uh, or a video uh, like Bruce Neumann did, um, uh, like a voice did, um, that uh, uh, that work um, is now is now coming to a full potential by adding uh, this um, augmented um, um, uh, aspect. Uh, so, and then uh, an idea of walking cinema is that that. Well, the idea of let's say of the, the, this media seems to be that you really can become part of of a, of, a, of a digital experience that you can you have agency in it that you can. Um, 
uh, the, um, that you have the, you have a freedom in it that that was also the freedom that performance artists were looking for uh, in the 60s and 70s of the last century. Uh, Is there a spiritual dimension to this? That, that's a thought that I've just had because that would uh, mm -hmm. broaden the. Um, you said a metaphysical. Um, that would broaden it out, and I could perhaps come in uh, come in with you at that point. So. I, I, I agree uh, what your, your, you know, what the 60s and 70s was about that particular time. But the, uh, my interest has always been the spiritual aspect of it. And I think that's so broad and the possibility of virtual reality of connecting on a spiritual level. I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's a totally unknown domain that we're opening up here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very you know, exciting. And the, we're all sort of feeling in our different ways, a sort of a common not goal because that's that's definitive but a sort of a, um involvement really um whatever that is that there, there's something going on in the air <laughs> there is something in the air absolutely <laughs> but that's something that's interesting because if technology and virtual reality and all the parallel realities here are not an interest um and that's definitely a medium that has been exp has been explored and it's not something new right a virtual reality started already some some uh, decades before so in the 60s we already had virtual reality happening just that it was not popular in this in the uh, in that moment and also that didn't become something uh, affordable for artists to be experimenting with the media uh, but definitely it's like you know it's like it's uh, a different media but the converse it's interesting that it became like the the conversation became this topic became like the the main one but the the subject here is like the, how nomadism informed um, a compositional practice and how walking as a, a, as a performance of the composers and also uh, the performance of the characters and also the performance of the audience is uh, the the material of this composition right so we could do a transcendental mundi um, uh, without, without virtual reality and then we make this in a in a in a city. And just we we go and and we can perform a walkscape there in a different format. So virtual reality is, was a form for us to to freeze that moment, freeze that experience, and make that possible in other places. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example that is like for most of us here know more than one one country, right? So we have been presenting this work in very remote areas where people have never left never left their own city. And they say, oh, I went to New York. Probably they will never have the possibility in their life to go to New York. So that virtual reality, creating that idea that I'm walking in the city that I will never be in, that I will never be and have never been, it is a power that the technology is giving us and giving to the artists and to the audience that is uh, impossible to be not to be recognizable, right? Well, absolutely, yeah, completely agree. So that's that, so. These are different these are different aspects of of how it how we interact with technology. Technology can be a limiting ap, uh, um, aspect or can be a very expanding aspect for composition. So uh, probably you guys won't walk in certain areas that that work can take you to, and that that can be a way of uh, the virtual walkscape is also this uh, this possibility and contribution that can uh, expand the idea of walking. That's the transhumanist that Delilus talks about when we are talking about uh, migrating not only animals and up and down um, the, the valleys, but when I am transhumaning uh, around the world, even if it's through a virtual reality, a metaverse with an avatar and all that, that's an expanded way of, of understanding walking, right? Yeah, but Malevich, when he painted the black square, it wasn't about the end of easel painting. It was about stopping and seeing where we're at. My thing is, I think we've all got overlaps, but there's something in, 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 in computers that it's going its own course. And we need to see where it's opening up. It's fantastic, but how it relates to everything else in life. There doesn't seem to be much reflection on, i.e., your ideas and my ideas are very similar, but I can't quite see how they link. There is a link and very little discussion is about what that link is. And to me, that's where the money is. You know, I want to, well, I want to cooperate. I want for us all to come together to pull our, our, our enormous resources and find a way of 
bringing it all into one. I don't necessarily see that happening. And I think more of this sort of discussion would be help, helpful in, in facilitating that. It's very awkward. It's very uncomfortable to be working uh, cooperatively with people because you're all the time destroying your own self-belief, but it's a necessary procedure. It's sort of getting rid of the ego and all that kind of stuff. And uh, fantastic, sorry. That's in very interesting for all of us to, to share this, also this perspective. Um, also, I would say um, definitely this is a discussion to be having long, but I think that the works also talk a lot for themselves, right? When we wear the VR or when we watch the work with a beginner mind, with that mind that is like, I don't know all the background that we have, what comes from this, what is the emotion or what are the thoughts that this work can awaken in me? What are the connections that... Uh, can have because sometimes we as artists we are of course we have tons of backgrounds we are judging the whole time and all that but we when we see a kid uh, experiencing a work that is complex that is full of uh, deep layers and it's well here we had that somebody leaving the line and going back to the line waiting two hours to watch the work again here for example we had an exhibition we had only four headsets and two thousand people wanting to watch that the lines were whole day uh, waiting for that and each one only had five minutes to watch when you see kids wanting to come back and that's they, look there is no animation in the work there is not a video game because a lot of people think oh it's vr there is a video game inside no there is no video game it's all pure real as we're we're showing human beings there is nothing no. more boring than that right nothing yeah, more yeah. boring so that's why it's also so simple the work is very simple and that's also why it, it called the attention for many arts saying this is not an artwork and we were like, okay, this is not an artwork, right? So no. that the, the work evoked a lot of discussions about is it art, is it not art? And, and and that's also, I think that the work can talk by itself when you experience that and like, and the shock, what comes from that? So I would invite you all to watch the work on, on online today, although it's not the VR. The VR only can be watched in uh, in in-person exhibitions, also because of the power of the experience in the immersion with the VR headsets. Um, I, I would totally invite you for a next moment in person. I'm sorry that we couldn't go to Catalonia this, this year. It would be amazing to have met you all there and to have taken the headsets. But that was um, didn't happen this year. COVID didn't allow us. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just aware that there are a few people in the cafe who, who haven't spoken up and... and and maybe uh, haven't contributed uh, in the chat. So I just want to make sure that no one uh, misses out on the opportunity of at least contributing something. And so uh, you know who you are, you silent ones out there. So, uh, you know, if, you, uh, if you'd like to pitch in and tell us a little bit how your work might uh, impinge on the work of uh, Candida and Gabrielle, or, you know, whether you think they're mad or just... Uh, <laughs> this is not art. Well, I, you know, I, I think, that, I mean, this is one of the things that we sort of have to get to, isn't it? Is the fact that our, our human brains are really capable of, of, of uh, absorbing and, and calculating uh, and millions and millions of, of things uh, all at the same time. And, uh, and the digital hasn't, you know, the virtual hasn't yet caught up with uh, the human brain yet. Um, uh, and and that what you've already discovered is you have to have some mechanism of cataloging and archiving all the different aspects that you've got, and then you know how how can you then make it really easy and accessible for people to draw on that and 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 and, and be a, a disc jockey and mix it or a cocktail shaker and mix it up the way that they want to have it mixed. So yeah, yeah, no, I mean you know I think there's. Um, um you, you've you've set yourself a huge task um you're you're suckers for uh, for punishment um uh, but i'd love to hear what other people think if there's i mean vicky you've been making um vicky's had to go i think but i think there are other people in the in the room i'm sure there are i think that vicky answered i'm checking now here the chat there are some messages here if you want to take a look maybe yeah yeah i mean vicky pitched something but then she said you had to go <laughs> so she uh but um uh, she said recorded some uh, some interesting things about people discussing near-death experiences uh, and that's some kind of installation but 
I'm just aware, you know, um, uh, there's been some uh, great stuff already, but is there anyone out there who wants to chip in anything who's not said anything? There's one new message here. Thanks very much. I have to leave. Mm -hmm. And also, we are we are here, and we have also our emails here. I'm going to leave the email here also. Contact at Transiontesmundi. Yeah. So I'm sitting in the dark. No one knows whether I actually exist now. So I better put on a light. And I'm there are also new works coming up that we would love to to hear from you. We have some new releases coming up, and that's. Um, yeah, so as we said, this is a project that is ongoing, right? So we are still recording more. Uh, we are presenting uh, exactly these discussions in other festivals. There is a new, uh, two new uh, articles that we are publishing this year um, and new artistic works. There are collaborations also coming up. There are also residencies in Colombia that we will be receiving artists also to walk with us here and to create works from the lands that we have here. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Well, um, okay, I mean, if there's no more, uh, I'd love to give you both a little chance to have the last word on the project and, and say uh, a sort of kind of summing up. Uh, but yeah, if I invite you to do that, I'll just say, if I may, a little plug for a fortnight's time. Uh, we have um, an artist from the Ukraine um, who's going to be coming to uh, talk um, if he can uh, because he's in the war zone um, and uh, we're hoping that he's going to be able to join us so if people would like to look out for that and book for that in a fortnight's time that would be great and, uh, and another reminder that it's Soundwalk September coming up very rapidly so if you've got work that you'd like to uh, either uh, make happen during September in an event or whether you'd like to uh, put some of your own work uh, work in for the Soundwalk September Awards, then please do so. We'd love to to have that. And um, yeah, so uh, Candida and Gabrielle, if you have the last word, but I'd like to say thank you very much. It's been really fascinating uh, cafe. And uh, over to you for the last words. I, I just yeah. want to say thank you and very inviting to see our work and yeah, we have a chance to come here in Colombia and we can work together also and participate in your, your projects too. Thank you. Thank you. We hope to see you also if you want to join us in October, October 19th. We will be in London, right, Andrew, that we mentioned to that. That will be the Lumen Prize uh, party and we are expecting for the final prize. Which are some some dollars, some dollars, no, some euros <laughs> to help pay the expenses of the trips. Um, so we're excited about that. Also excited to continue to follow. Um, now that I discovered the cafes and all that, I want also to participate and enrich our methodologies with our other learning about the work of others also. So I'm very happy and want to congratulate you uh, on this amazing project. All right. Well, thank you to everyone. Yeah, thank you to everyone uh, for coming to the cafe. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 close it now. And uh, Candida, you've actually been running the Zoom and recording yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, we'll that's... send that to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye, bye everyone. Okay. Thank uh, you so bye. much. Have a very good day. Thank you. I'm just to like say goodbye. Thank you so much, Candida and Gabriel, for this uh, uh, mind uh, expanding uh, presentation and uh, discussion. Um, and and uh, thank you all for being here. So uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Thank you. See bye you. bye. Thank you.